It is good to worship together. We give thanks for the ways in which God connects us near and far. God created us to be generous people. And we give thanks, too, for the ways you share your abundance with those around you. As you go about your week, consider the opportunities you encounter to give to others just as God has given to you. We join in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Together we acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with his healing in its wings. The Gospel according to Luke. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. I haven't been to cathedrals in Europe, but the cathedrals I've been to in the United States are impressive to your senses. I love walking in from Fifth Avenue in New York City. The sea of people, the noise of cars honking and sirens going by, all of which I do actually like. But when you walk into St. Patrick's Cathedral, it's as though time stops. The chaos of the world outside is still going on. You can hear the sirens faintly, but inside those walls, there's a different kind of holiness. I don't know what the temple felt like, but it was majestic and it was massive. And the disciples were looking at it with awe and Jesus proclaimed, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. And of course this seems impossible, but the disciples asked the same question I think that I would ask, when is this going to happen? What kind of warning are we going to get? This apocalyptic Jesus can bring about curiosity as well as uncertainty. I mean, as much as we might want change, the places and possessions of our lives bring us comfort. So Jesus announcing that it will all be destroyed is concerning. Perhaps not because it will be gone, but because we cannot conceive what will come next. Instead of buildings, think about the stock market, think about bank accounts, think about the systems of society. As much as me white, we might want all of that to change. There's a piece in each of us that wants to cling to what we have and the pieces of the systems that work for us as individuals. And Jesus is saying that is all going to come crashing down. When Jesus, when is this going to happen? Asks both the disciples then and us now. And we don't get an answer. We don't get a timeline. We get images of what the end will look like. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes, famine, and plagues, persecution for proclaiming Jesus in the midst of it all. If I were to ask you, I imagine this isn't the future you're hoping for. But the thing is, the end is not what is to be feared. The end is not something to try and escape from. The end that we hear about from Jesus and see in our lives, the end which brings pain that we all know, our faith hinges on the fact that the end is the beginning. Sometimes Meg and my parents and my friends get antsy when I talk about the end too much, which I do a lot and I certainly understand them getting antsy. 
but because this complete destruction and death brings pain and grief, we know all too well. So it brings concern to others when I talk about it. But the end, the final end, when God has the final word, the pain will all be transformed into peace and joy and wholeness we can only begin to dream of and scratch the surface of understanding. The end means pain and suffering will be no more. The end means depression and anxiety will have no power. The end means grief will be no more. The end means loneliness will be no more. The end means oppression will be no more. So if that's what the end means, how can we not hope for it and long for the end to come? The only way into new life is through death. The beginning can only happen when the end arrives. So I pray for the end. I pray for the stones to fall. We participate in the end coming and new life beginning when we work against systems of oppression and fight for justice for all people. We participate in the end coming and new life beginning when we shift that which we value, not places and possessions, but people. When we love God and love our neighbors in the way Jesus calls us, we participate in the destruction of sin and suffering and in the new life that is to come. Do not let your hearts be troubled. The end is only a transition into a new beginning that will never end. For it is new life in the very presence of God, living as we were created to live and filled with peace in ways only God can provide. Remember, the end is just the beginning. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Renewing God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard your first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uniting God, Unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.